Hello, everyone. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's totally free. They also have creation tools that allow you to edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. How convenient is that? Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. So what are you waiting for? You can also make money with no minimum listenership. It's time to get started. Hey, what's up, everybody? We got Brother Bomani on the line with us. Today, we're going to be talking about repatriation. This brother is a dynamic, dynamic brother. He's a dynamic brother, and he's got some tourism going on. This brother, he's got an organization called Africa for the Africans, and this brother is going to tell you a little bit more about who he is, his initiatives, with a touring piece, with repatriation, and how he has been involved with the uh, Pan African movement. This brother is a phenomenal guy, man. You guys, you guys got to hear from Bo- Brother Bomani. Brother Bomani, how you doing? Welcome to the show. All right, uh, greetings, family. Uh, this is Bomani Tamba from uh, Africa for the African Tourism Investment, and that's a business we've been doing since uh, 2006. So, what got you involved in this movement for the uh, for the Africa? Uh, yes, uh, uh, what really connected me to this. Um, uh, this uh, movement is uh, just wanting to know more about my roots uh, in the early 2000s. And, uh, you know, after this, being a person that joined the U.S. Navy and spending time there, just uh, learning how to build my craft as an aircraft technician and uh, getting a job here in Atlanta, but at the Atlanta airport. And then, you know, just, uh, people who know Atlanta as a, you know, as a, a city uh, full of black folk. Uh, so just coming down here, I was able to meet, people in, into their roots and culture and started to, to build an interest and wanted to read some of the books that they were reading and you know, go to some of the meetings they, want, they were going to and, you know, be a part of, uh, you know, energy about uh, going to Africa. But ultimately, it was uh, myself going to Africa in 2004, you know, doing a practical stage of it because you can read books, you can study, you can do many things, but there's nothing like experience in the experience. So I started building my mindset on that, like, you know, I hear uh, our folks talking about Africa and things like that, and especially from a conscious mindset, but I don't hear it more from the mainstream. So I wanted to go ch- uh, check out the continent, uh, record everything, which is from 2004 to now, that's uh, what I do this with a passion and to share all the experience because once I got to the continent in 2004, which is um, Senegal in, in, um, in March of 2004 and then Egypt in April of 2004, it just changed the dynamics of my mindset especially the trip to Senegal, because now you're dealing with African Holocaust, uh, especially when you go to a place called Gori Island. Uh, it's similar to what we know in Ghana as Cape Coast and Elmina uh, African Holocaust dungeons, where African, African ancestors uh, were stolen. Uh, so having that connection and wanting to know more and then while you're learning more, you're actually connected into historical places. And then, and then you know, Egypt itself right there, that's just, you know, just the incredible history of this ancient uh, history of our ancestors is physically still being up to where you can look at it, connect it, and say, yo, this, this is our greatness. Uh, so on that energy, uh, just really connecting, wanted to spend more time and go to other countries. So in 2005, they did, did the same. I went to a few different countries, including South Africa and uh, Kenya. And uh, then 2006, uh, that's when I really started just trying to see if I can just put together packages to get more people to come to Africa. And I went to uh, my fifth country, uh, the Gambia, then the sixth country, Ghana. And once I got to Ghana, it was just it right there. I just found something special where I could really start doing these um, tours and connecting our own people to that experience. Um, because once I went in 2004, it was no doubt that we need to show our brothers and sisters what's going on in Africa as far as how peaceful and wonderful energy is. And the whole time I'm going to all these countries, I'm telling you, brother, not one single issue or problem. Just being able to get around, and even though it wasn't like what we have now with like 20, 30 people, we had no problems, and it just, you know, it was just unbelievable love. And you still couldn't believe it because you've been told and lied to so many, you know, for you, basically your whole life about Africa. And uh, once you see the truth, you just have to uh, share it. So that was a sixth country, and it's been about 10 plus straight years of continuing to go to Ghana and kind of building a foundation and learning more about living and doing business in Africa and learning about how we can get land 
and, and put our money together and build communities and went through a few phases of trying to work with other people with land. It uh, didn't work out as good. But nevertheless, kept on going to Africa, kept on going to other countries. And now in 2019, um, which is the last time I was in uh, Africa, um, well, that was well, my Mike, 13th. Quick, really quick if I can, really quick if I can, because you mentioned some phenomenal, some phenomenal points. You've been traveling back and forth to Africa for, you know, maybe 10 years or so. You have uh, the tourism piece going on. You mentioned the Black Holocaust. Now, I don't know if our listeners heard you when you said the Black Holocaust. You mentioned Cape Coast. You mentioned Elmina. Tell us a little bit more personally about what your experience was like when you visited these Black Holocaust sites for the very first time and what made you stay in close proximity to the, to the Black Holocaust sites and to begin your tourism? Uh, yes, um, the, the, and the three places, um, and I'll just name the few places and, cause, and summarize them all together because they all have relevant uh, interests. Uh, in Senegal, there's Island, Gori Island. Um, then you have uh, Cape Coast, Elmina, uh, Ghana, um, in the central region. Then you have um, Wida Benin, and those are literally the four most popular ones, two in Ghana, one in Benin, and one in um, Senegal. And just appreciate this having a different variation of history um, of this, what happened to ancestors because, you know, once you started studying, you know, you want to make sure that you're clear about what's going on. And in order to be clear, you really have to do additional research because this is not something that uh, you're going to learn in high school or university or anywhere outside of this. Your own studies are really being connected to certain people. Uh, but, but as far as going there, when you're in these places, as far as you can sense the energy of your ancestors, you can smell the blood, the, you know, you can, it kind of takes you back into, into time. And it's, it, it, you know, after a while you go there, it, it's kind of a little, a little simpler, but I'm talking about for the first time I went to uh, these um, uh, four uh, Holocaust dungeon uh, spaces, it literally just made you just wonder, you know, and it, it shows you the resilience of our people because, you know, you, you were stolen as African and then you're there and then you're just putting it all together. And it just really honestly just bring clarity and it really brings you into a mindset of peace to where you're clear about certain things. And then also boosts you with the energy like we have a lot of work to do because if this happens to our ancestors, this can still happen to us today as a people. And we see remnants of things like that and craziness going on where we're not secure as a people. So you also tell them folks that let's put our energy together, let's build a strong black Africa, let's build it to where no one will ever steal us again as a people, and we as a people can put together energy to rise and, and you know, all that energy. So it gives you a lot of strength, um, and for some people it, it, it wears you out because I do remember, like, just having uh, what you consider, like, not nightmares, but uh, nightmares to where, you know, you, you, you arrest them maybe for the next several weeks and it's consistently in your mind and it consistently just connecting with you. So after a while, I just figured the best thing was to do is just take as many of my own brothers and sisters to those locations and for us to just use it as a connection point to kind of, you know, we, we talk about healing and that's really what it does. It, it heals y your soul and just connects you to this, be ready for the revolution, I should say. You mentioned 2019. What happened in 2019? And uh, bring us up to speed. From 2019 up to 2020, where we are today, what initiatives do you have going on currently? And I know that you're also involved with um, conducting tours throughout the continent of Africa. Um, tell us a little bit more about that aspect as well and how our people can be involved in it. Yes, 2019 was that wonderful 2019 year for turn. Uh, and 2019 is our last, uh, also the last time I was in the African continent. I was in South Africa in November uh, around Thanksgiving time with a group, and then I was in uh, Ghana um, around uh, Christmas and New Year's. And that was our 15 straight years of traveling to the African continent from 2004 to 2019. And that, you know, at a 15-year mark of traveling and doing this thing, it gives you a great amount of experience. And also a lot of things was literally starting to become clear, like we're literally able to start uh, getting our own land. And when I mean we, I've been building a repatriation group for the last 15 years, getting name numbers and email and talking to people and asking them, what, what do you think about us living and doing business in Africa and traveling to Africa? And that's a list of how I get a lot of the people to travel with me because I've built relationships. Some people, I spent 5, 10, 15 years getting to know and building that connection because it's not a world where you're just going to find a bunch of people interested in Africa. Uh, so 
that marks the year where, you know, you start getting, you, people start acknowledging you more as far as somebody who knows what they're doing because they've seen you do it so long and do it at a high level over and over. And that became a point where we started being clear about what we wanted to do in Ghana and also looking to expand into other countries, like I mentioned to you, um, South Africa, but also um, was able to start thinking about a country, Tanzania, which we're heading to in approximately five days, November 20th. And it uh, takes you to a level where you see where you can kind of, okay, we can expand into this country and even add um, Senegal and Gambia um, to that schedule. And talking about Gambia, Gambia is another country. It has, uh, it has the birthplace of Kinte, Kunta Kinte, and you have, a, you have a location called James Allen and Jufri, so you're going to learn more about the African Holocaust in that situation. I'll be able to share more with people in the future. Uh, so that's really the connection of that 15 years and uh, it just really put me in a situation where now I can just literally just expand and offer other opportunities because after a while you have to just step up and think about leadership, think about just, you know, organizing your people. And then the greatest thing that we can do is always going to be like corporate economics, not just traveling to Africa, but saying, hey, let's put our money together, let's get land, let's invest in other things. And that's where we are now. And we're building more of the investment part of our business, uh, which is called Africa for Africans Tours and Investment. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that, and I, I want to say that I appreciate you for taking time out to express your passion for what's going on in Africa and your involvement in Africa. You know, you've got brothers and sisters that want to come from the diaspora to Africa for the first time. Tell us a little bit about what your experience was like for the first time and how Africans that want to repatriate uh, to Ghana or to Africa today in 2020, 2021 coming up, how convenient, if that's a, a good word I can use, how convenient um, will that be for them? What type of challenges do they have to look forward to facing? Uh, yes, uh, uh, that's always an interesting uh, question. As far as myself, uh, once I first got to the, the content, and the good thing about people like myself, everything I do is uh, literally planned out, you know, and that's from my, you know, my, my military naval roots because a lot of the stuff that I learned at that point was about just being organized and about structuring yourself as a young man to you know to get things done more efficient. So um, I'm always I'm always organizing things like you know I have I always have a ground team even when I never went to a country like I don't I never been to Tanzania and I already you know I recruited a staff I got them checked out by friends of mine and things like that and just like that the business set up but even back in that time. When I first started going between 2004 to 2006, uh, we just organized good people that we, you know, we feel we can connect with. And usually it's somebody from, somebody that I know from America that live in that country, and we just kind of build that relationship. And then from there, they kind of connect us with the local people that we know. So that's always been a good way for me to get connected to the continent and be able to get connected to good people. And then, you know, we kind of check people out and build a relationship from there on. Uh, so... My first set of experience was incredible at the greatest time, and this is when I used to also, when I went to countries, I used to stay back a little longer, so then I would just hang out with local people, and then, uh, you know, my friends and things that live in that country, we would just move around and we'd just get a feel of the country, and, you know, it's kind of like you do, you're doing field research and building your experience, um, and that's how I feel so strong about Africa now, uh, 15 years later, because I put that work in, and, um, and I kind of can give the best advice or consultation of people like make this move, don't make this move. This is how you structure yourself. And it's kind of like being someone who's you know, in an in a efficient, uh, you know, like a person who's leading, a, you know, leading a professional team and they got the experience and they're training and showing everybody else how to do it because they're so good at winning. And that's where I, I feel like I'm at now and I want to get better because ultimately we have a great population of brothers and sisters in America where if we use about 5% of that population and connect them to Africa, we can do incredible things. Uh, but a lot of times the issue is literally the ground game. So uh, once I was able to really have a good time and be, you know, be, be feel safe and feel connected, I kept on us going and going. And, you know, you're kind of doing something to see how things are going to mature for the time frame. Because anyone can go to any country and have a good time for once or twice. But when you go to Ghana and you have a great time for 13 straight years on 17 journeys, and you have little to no problems or any problems or issue that you have, you and your crew or staff was able to work out and fix and things like that. That is a beautiful thing. So it really put us in a situation where we can do this long term. 
And so if anyone wants to connect with us, we'll be able to connect them with the right people, the right energy. The ideal thing is to